WCON 1170 Radio and Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Thank you for being with us today. We Should Know is on the air. I'm J.W. Simmons, your host. Today we're talking about the YMCA, and we're talking with Jared Barrier, who is the executive director out there. Uh, Jared, thank you for coming back. It's been a year uh, at least, or maybe a little more, but it's been about a year since we've had a conversation with you, and time's gone by so fast. It has. It is, it's flown by, and, and thank you for inviting us back again. Uh, you know, it's hard to keep track of all that's gone on in the last year. Um, we had our grand opening in June of last year. And um, I mean, since then, we have just hit the ground running. Um, you know, our, the amount of programming we've been offering is increasing steadily. And um, we're getting to the point now where we can really start expanding our youth programming options. And so that's very encouraging, very exciting um, that we're getting to that point. And um, the, the level of community support we've received in the last year has been outstanding. Um, it's, it's very encouraging um, to have the community kind of kind of show up and come out and support the YMCA. You know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I want to remind people that we introduced you the last time you were here and we talked about your background with the military and, and how you got engaged with uh, YMCA. And, and a lot of that uh, built around the, the whole concept of, of your personal desire to make a difference in your community. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I, from my perspective as the executive director of the Samson County YMCA, it's, it's almost in two parts because I, I have my professional role. But at the same time, you know, being a resident of Samson County mm -hmm. and, um, you know, being a father, you know, I, and, and seeing all the needs in our community, um, worrying about the future and, um, you know, trying to set our, our kids and, um, you know, friends and families up for success in the future. Um, I feel like the YMCA, um, you know, from my dual roles, I mean, is is poison in the perfect spot to make an impact here in Sampson County. One of the things, and we we've, we've had a, a chance uh, this morning to kind of sit down and uh, have a off camera conversation mm -hmm. a little longer than normal. But uh, one of the things that we talked about off camera was interesting, not only to you, to me as well. Is uh, one of the founders or the founder of the YMCA back in 1844, uh, a fellow by the name of George Williams uh, started this whole thing. But it was out of the need uh, to address some children at the time. In London, England, mm -hmm. uh, that were somewhat uh, in a situation with uh, factories and tenement living and harsh factory life. Uh, the phrase that was used, and, and we talked about this a while ago, but I want to just kind of reintroduce this. It said driftless youth culture. And, and it caused me and this idea of youth and the importance of being able to have something that they can adhere to. When you look at that, how, is, how important is that today as it was several centuries ago? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we had the separation of uh, 180 years, but, you know, we, we seem to have, uh, and it, it's happened probably countless times since then, um, culturally, we, we seem to kind of be in the same situation. I think that, um, you know, with, with the current climate and environment, you know, so many parents, um, you know, are, are tied up with work and with their lives. And, and sometimes the kids don't have that structure um, that, that they really need. And so, you know, besides the school systems, um, the YMCA is here to be able to provide that additional structure, um, those mentorship programs, um, that, that time in, an, in a positive environment, um, our kids are able to develop some some life skills and and um, you know be in a safe and welcoming environment to to be encouraged to um, reach their full potential. And um, I feel it's interesting to think about the needs that were the community had back then um, seem to be coming back to us now in 2023. Absolutely. And the last time we talked, you had a lot of a lot of things that you could see, you could envision. Some of those things has come come to fruition. One of the things I was reading that you're doing um, this spring, and I don't know whether it's going into the summer or not, and it was fascinating for me, it's this youth soccer. Mm -hmm. And one of those programs was called Itty Bitty Soccer League. Mm -hmm. Itty Bitty. So we're talking small, small Itty Bitty children. kids, yeah. <laughs> so it, it's uh, basically two and three-year-olds, and then some four-year-olds are going to be able to get in there as well. But um, this was kind of our introductory youth sport that we were able to offer, and we felt it was a perfect, uh, the perfect program to offer as an introduction. And, and 
um, you know, because there wasn't anything else in the community for this age group of kids, uh, especially for soccer. So we wanted to get something out and we had a great turnout. Um, I think believe we had over 40 kids registered, uh, which has been really encouraging and exciting. And, and I was out there last week with one of the practices and I mean, it is, I mean, it's just as entertain, entertaining as you can imagine, just T-ball, but even more, you know, um, e even more descriptive of just how much fun kids can have at that age when they're when they're getting out and experiencing something new. But um, that'll be wrapping up here in a couple weeks. So, and, it's, and that's the impressionable years too. I mean, you're you're really engaging kids at that age and and following them right on through. They have a sense of an identity with the why. Right. They they understand. They they see you. They see all of the folks that work with you to make this happen. Yeah, and I'm hoping you know that in the future, in the next year or two, we can kind of continue those offerings, especially with soccer. And so we'll have soccer programming for those kids as they age and mature. And, and you know, we also have some some other areas um, right now where kids in that age group can participate in programming. So you know, there at the facility, we have Child Watch. So. Um, that, that's an opportunity for parents to come in and work out. And uh, we have drop-in child care where um, our staff can interact with them and they can interact with other kids and, and be entertained and, and be in a good, safe environment and have some fun and um, kind of have another introduction to the YMCA. But um, we also have youth swim lessons. Um, so kids that age can have swim lessons and they're called parent and me lessons. Mm -hmm. So it's basically a group swim lesson where uh, mom or dad gets in the pool with the kid and um, you know kind of introduces them to the water and introduces them to swimming. This, I mean, and I think the interesting thing is, is that when we did some video work over there, we looked at the pool and the pool area. There's nothing in the area, in the region, uh, th that even compares to the capability and capacity of what you've got there. Exactly. I mean, we're the we're the only indoor pool in the county, and I mean, you're having to drive 45 minutes minimum um, to get to another indoor pool. So we have that opportunity uh, to provide this, you know, programming for kids year round, and and not just swim lessons themselves, but also safety around water programming. Mm -hmm. um, we had a safety around water class last month. Um, we have another two planned for this month because um, it is water safety month, uh, and so. I believe the last week of May, we will be having a, another larger um, safety around water program. And so that's for kids who, who may not, who may be able to swim, may not be able to swim. I mean, it's a great pre-summer activity, uh, especially if you're, you know, kids are going to be out at the lake or, um, or, you know, at the beach or mm -hmm. uh, just around water in general. Um, it, it gives them those skills and tools they need so they can be safe and um, still be able to have fun in the water. Water safety is always one of those horrible things yes. that you think about and we see them on the news and, and an unfortunate situation that occurs with even small children or even yeah. larger children. Uh, is is that something that folks can literally look to the why and say, look, I want to bring my children here. I want to kind of get you guys to help us understand so this kind of thing never happens to us. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it's so important and it, it is a big focus um, for the YMCA, uh, especially for, for our branch and for our aquatics director. Um, we're very, very safety focused and we try to spend as much time as possible uh, reinforcing um, those tools and skills needed to, for kids to be safe around water. And, um, you know, just for example, we have time during the week for kids to come in and swim in a non-structured environment, but we have requirements um, for kids to be able to pass swim like a swim test before they can swim um, at a certain age without a life jacket. And um, so we, we try to reinforce uh, across the board with the pool activities. We try to reinforce that and then provide the tools to those kids who may not be at that level yet. We try to provide those tools to the kids so they can get in and, and either learn to swim or they can learn how to, to function in the water safely. Let's talk about some things that you got because summer's right around the corner here. I mean, you know, by the time this show airs, people are going to be thinking, well, what am I going to do? Uh, school's going to be out. My children need something to do. And mm -hmm. as you and I were talking about off air, the, the days of saying, well, we got some 12, 14 year olds here. We can put them in the field of work. Right. That's history. That ain't going to happen anymore. So mm -hmm. uh, help us understand what's going to be available this summer and what you're planning this summer okay. that could be a benefit to parents. All right, great. Yeah, so, um, you know, besides our typical just day-to-day -day child watch there at the facility, and that's for kids um, from six weeks to 11 years old, um, and it's it's primarily in the mornings. We'll probably look at increasing some of our hours, but right now it's 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., and then from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And um, besides that, we are excited to announce that we're going to be offering our first, um, first year of 
um, youth summer camps. So we're gonna have a youth summer camp and registration is currently open. Um, parents can find that registration information on our website. And um, you know, it's basically gonna be a, a day camp for kids um, so they can come out and have some great activities, spend time with their friends, but also spend time in that environment I mentioned earlier, where they're gonna have a nice structured environment. Um, it's gonna have an encouraging and, and almost a mentorship feel to it. Um, the kids will be able to have fun, but then they'll also uh, you know, learn a lot and gain a lot from the program. Um, but that's, that's primarily our biggest new offering this summer is gonna be youth summer camp. And then we'll have programs and um, you know, activities scheduled throughout the summer. Uh, one that we have year round that we'll continue with is our uh, kids night out program. And it's on Saturday nights. And um, like I said, we run that year round and it's typically the third Saturday of the month. Um, and if, if we you know, have a higher demand for it this year, then we might increase those. Um, so if you're interested in any of those, I encourage parents to reach out to the facility or uh, contact us through our website and let us know that, that you're interested. And, and I think the, the idea here is that, especially, and we're going to try to put your website on the screen so people okay, can look great. at that and reach out to you. That One of the keys I, that we've talked about, and you just mentioned too, is that's this idea of being able to connect with you and your staff and, and kind of not only know what's happening, but understand. And, and the safety issue is also something critically important to you. I, I know that in, in our conversation that uh, all fair, you've talked about safety over and over again. I want to try to address that and also look at some of the issues that um, are going to face you this summer that maybe people can help with. Uh, there's, there's always this idea that this is happening and uh, you and your staff can take care of this and this, but there's always things that uh, you would like to have a little more help with or maybe some financial support with. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we come back from this break, I'd like to kind of uh, address those a okay. little bit. That's great. So we're going to take a quick break okay. and we'll be back and, and kind of cover that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with Jared Barrier. We're talking about the YMCA, right? here in Clinton, uh, and it's located right there close to the hospital on the corner of uh, Beeman and Johnson Street. Can't miss it. Uh, reach out, and we're going to give you the address, telephone number, and that kind of thing on the screen. We'll be back in one moment to continue the discussion about how the YMCA can not only assist and help your grandchildren, but if you happen to be a senior, it can help you as well. We'll be back in a moment. Providing fewer commutes, more backyard offices, and crystal clear meetings. Providing less, uh, you froze up. And more presence in your presentations. Providing a better internet experience. Providing possible. You're out for an evening on the town. Finally a chance to relax and forget that you left your front door completely unlocked. Fortunately, you just installed a security system from Star Communications. With just your cell phone, you can check on your house, lock it down, light it up, and get back to relaxing. You forgot to put Buster in his crate. Unfortunately, we can't help with that. Security and automation from Star Communications. Call today to find out more. Most aging adults want to stay in their homes as long as possible. And as your loved ones get older, you want to support them, even when you can't be there. STAR is proud to offer STAR Alert. This new system is now mobile and has GPS compatibility, so your loved ones can live their lives and you can have peace of mind, knowing they can get the help they need with just the simple push of a button. The new STAR Alert also offers automatic fall detection, so help will be alerted even if they can't press the button. Call and ask about STAR Alert today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're coming up on our second segment here of We Should Know. We're coming to you from Star Communications, Channel 16, also simulcast on WCLN Radio uh, each and every week. Today we're talking about the YMCA. The executive director is Jared Barrier. Jared, thank you for being here. I introduced you a while ago and mentioned your uh, your military background. You were with the U.S. Army. Uh, you actually are originally are from Buffalo uh, Gap, Texas, right. I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but you live in Sampson County, been living in this area for some time yeah. since being associated to Fort Bragg. That's right. Yeah, so shortly after coming to Fort Bragg, I met my wife. She's from Roseboro. And so, um, you know, we, we got married and, and I've stuck around since then. So we're, I think I've been a resident of Samson County for about 15, 16 years now. Yeah. 
I, yeah. I have people sometimes that say they're not a lifetime resident, but they got here quick as they could that's when right. they found out about it. Yeah, so, that's right. So <laughs> maybe that's the situation. I want to kind of follow up on the YMCA and what you have done over the past year. Mm -hmm. Literally, you've taken something that uh, has it just kind of obviously is, is part of your life mm -hmm. and you're molding it into something that benefits the larger community. And it's a broad scale thing. We we talked a bit in the first segment about the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to talk about not only continue that discussion, but this, it, it amazes me in the sense that the Y addresses not only youth, but a broad spectrum to include yes. senior citizens, Absolutely. to include health and activity. Mm -hmm. uh, all of these things are available. How hard is it to get staff and enough people to help keep the thing organized and moving forward? Well, you know, it, at first before we opened, we were concerned with staffing, but I mean, I think once word got out and, um, you know, everybody started understanding just what the YMCA was going to bring. I mean, we had a, a flood of support. Um, we had a lot of people coming in, a lot of people who, um, you know, had been involved in similar activities before in the area um, came in and uh, started working with us. But, you know, and we have some some great staff from uh, from those that, that cover membership to those that work with the kids, um, you know, to those that, that teach classes and especially some of those classes that are focused towards um, some of our older members. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, right now we have a great lineup of classes um, and we have a strong um you know, retirement age population that comes in and works out in the morning. It really is a great sense of community. And, um, you know, we have a lot of classes that focus on, um, you know, that may be focused in the water um, for those that, that um, may find it easier to work out in the water and do a water aerobic style class. Um, and we also have those, you know, other lower intensity classes like yoga. And we have some that even go a little bit, you know, higher, a little more aggressive and, um, you know, Within the last few months, we've introduced pickleball. Um, it's it's a nationwide contagion right now, and it's starting to catch on here um, at the facility. And so right now we have um, five opportunities each week for people to come in and play pickleball. And um, everybody can find that information, in our schedule on our website. I've heard so much about pickleball, mm -hmm. and, and you're exactly right. It's like the it's the major phenomenon yeah. going on. <laughs> Tell us what pickleball is, and and how does it work within the environment of, okay, of sure. what you do? Yeah, so pickleball is basically kind of a, a condensed version of tennis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's played with a wiffle ball and a paddle, uh, usually a plastic or a wooden paddle, and uh, it's, it's very similar to tennis, but um, you know you're on a smaller scale. And um, so it can be a little bit, a little bit easier for those who maybe have some mobility issues, or maybe they're slowing down a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still a great workout, still a very active and fun sport. And uh, currently, right now, you know, we've only have one space for it, um, one court. That's why we're trying to um, increase our opportunities for people to play as um, you know our players are growing, and it, yeah. it is growing rapidly. Um, but right now we play it in the basketball court and um, we're hoping to figure out, you know, some additional facilities in the future. Um, but I know that it, I knew that as soon as it was introduced here in Clinton, it would it would take off. And it has. So we've what's got the average of age that you see majority of the people that play pickleball? Wow. So we've been I mean, starting out, it was mainly retirement aged. Um, but now we, we have the full range of players. And um, what, what's also increased is those that are playing racquetball, because um, we also have a racquetball court there in the facility. That's a and very aggressive. It is. Yeah. So, so you know, racquetball is like pickleball on steroids, pretty much. I mean, the ball is moving much faster. Um, you're a lot more mobile. Um, you know, it, it, it has a higher, you know, physical demand, but uh, we, we still have a great age range playing racquetball as well from I mean, we have kids and families coming in and playing. Um, and then we have a large you know, population of our retirement age members that are playing as well. This is a probably, you know, without actually seeing the inside and we did an inside video uh, about a year ago. Yeah. But I, I think actually what you're talking about is this is housed within that facility that's located right there on Beeman and Johnson mm -hmm. Street. And people can see the big sign that says YMCA. Yeah. Uh, all they got to do is walk in there and you actually show them around. Absolutely. I mean, we we encourage anybody to come in anytime we're open. I mean, our hours during the week are 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can come in any time. Uh, we're eight to five on Saturday and uh, one to five on Sunday. So we encourage anybody to come in. Um, our staff love showing everybody around and kind of sharing the why message and letting everybody know what we have going on in the facility. 
There was also a thing that was going on there some years back before the YMCA was there, um, a kitchen area. Yeah. Do, do you still do nutrition classes and those kinds of things? So we've had the opportunity to do a couple since we reopened, but we have plans to increase those quite a bit and start offering more. I mean, they were always very popular in the past, and those that we've had so far um, have been very popular. And, you know, in the next six months to a year, we'll really increase our um, programming focused on community wellness. And most of those most of those classes are free to the community. You don't have to be a member to participate, uh, but we'll have some nutrition classes, um, some diabetes prevention and support, mm -hmm. uh, probably some heart disease support. Uh, we've really the, the full range of, of, of issues that we seem to um, find most prevalent now um, that that are um, issues in the community, uh, you know, we're going to try to provide some support and provide mm -hmm. classes to help those individuals who may suffer with those issues or, um, you know, those who may need support uh, if they have a loved one or someone else close to them who, who suffer from some of these problems. Does, does the Y still uh, connect? Is there a relationship between Sampson Regional Medical Center and the YMCA? And if so, how does that work? Mm -hmm. So currently we are still connected with them. And, um, you know, right now we have a, a great relationship with Samson Regional and we have a, um, a partnership with them so their employees can still be members. And we have plans to, you know, continue some of those uh, community uh, help community well, health and wellness classes mm -hmm. that we offered in the past. And um, we're hoping Samson Regional will, will still be able to be involved in that. And then we'll also um, love to involve the, the health department and extension agency in um, you know, offering and facilitating some of those classes. Does the physical therapy component of the medical side still are, are they still housed there or did they move somewhere else? Or? Yeah, so the hospital's outpatient rehab uh, department is still located there uh, in the same facility as us. You know, on, they're, the B, on the Beeman on, Street right, side. On the Beeman Street side. And, um, you know, they're, they're, a great, they're a great group to share the building it's with. It's a nice and relationship. Great, it is, like. absolutely. And, uh, I mean, it's a great location, too. We, there's so, so many times if we have an injury or we have a surgery, that, you know, we have to rehab from and we need physical therapy. Uh, you know, having the, the our facility um, there, you know, in the same location, um, you know, is a great pathway for those who are wrapping up physical therapy, then, you know, hoping to try to stay more active or continue their therapy on their own. Um, they can always come next door and, and talk to us. We've got uh, wellness coaches. We've got personal trainers. Um, you know, a lot of our classes, uh, you know, they're run by experts who, you know, if, if you, you do have some issues you're trying to recover from, um, you know, those uh, group fitness instructors will be able to kind of tailor the workout to you and um, help you make it through, but help you continue to improve. How's, how's the volume of participation over the past year? Have you seen a significant increase? Uh, do you anticipate it reaching a point of uh, plateauing where you really can't take on any additional people or what does that look like? So, I mean, we have had great and steady growth uh, mm -hmm. since we opened. And I mean, and that's across the board, uh, you know, that's just attendance in the facility and attendance in programming. Um, you know, we've seen more and more kids participate in our child watch and in some of our youth programs and swim lessons. And, um, you know, as far as the classes go, we, we've tried to really focus on classes that, um, you know, had a great following and had some great growth. But I mean, at this point, everything we've introduced has done very well. And, um, you know, I, I think in the future we could reach that point where, um, you know, we would have to take reservations for classes. Um, I mean, luckily we're not there yet. Um, we have some great support and some great attendance in classes. But, yeah, I'd say within the next year we could get to the point where a few classes will have to take um, reservations. You know, you may have to register a week or two in advance. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that will be done through our app. And, um, you know, we have a few classes right now on the books that we're probably going to have to implement that for. But those will be new classes that aren't currently existing. But they'll be classes that are limited to six to eight or maybe ten participants. But uh, right now most of our classes can handle, you know, 15 participants, no problem. So what is, like, is there like a minimum number of participants that, that you look at registration and say, well, we've got four, we've got 10. Is there a minimum number you got to have before you look at starting a class? Well, typically, you know, right now with everything we have on the schedule, um, if we have a scheduled class, it doesn't matter how many people we have coming in, we're going to run that class. Now, uh, a new class, if we get enough interest, um, you know, then we'll, we typically what we would do is we'd schedule a pop-up class. We had, we had let those individuals who were interested know. We had advertise the class and maybe hold one on a Saturday or hold one in the evening or in the morning and um, see how it did. And if it had a, a you know great attendance and continued interest, then we could pr consider putting it on the schedule full-time. 
So, so when it, when you look at things, especially classes of that nature, if somebody has an idea, that's something they can also communicate uh, either to you or on the website, either either yeah. one, and and say, look, have you guys thought about whatever and, and put it out there? Absolutely. I mean, I'd encourage that because we, we love to hear from the community and and love to hear what the community wants and what everybody's interested in, in having at the facility. And um, I mean, not just at the facility, just our programming in general, um, you know, as we kind of grow and, and expand the different programming that we can offer, um, whether it's, you know, for adults, for seniors um, or for youth, we, we'd love to have the communities. Uh, <sighs> you know, hear back and, and, and right now you can, uh, there's an interest form online uh, on our website where you can go and, and um, just give us your thoughts and give us some feedback. And then as well, I mean, you can call us, call me, uh, call any of our, our leadership staff there at the facility and let us know what you'd like to see. Well, for folks who started recognizing your face, I'm sure they're going to be seeing you in the community more and more. And as you, as that happens, you're going to get input from all kinds of angles. So Absolutely. when we come back, we want to talk a bit more about that idea of community and what that needs. We're going to take a break Absolutely. and we'll be back. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a moment. We're talking with Jared Barrier with the uh, YMCA right here in Clinton, North Carolina. And it's close to you. It's connected with you. And there's always something there that you can be involved in to improve your life, to improve your emotional and physical skills. We'll be back in one moment. Stay tuned. For the ultimate Wi-Fi experience, you need whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Star's whole home Wi-Fi provides ultimate coverage, ultimate performance, and ultimate power all the time. Star's whole home Wi-Fi systems feature the latest Wi-Fi 6 technology and are equipped with unrivaled bandwidth and four times more simultaneous connections. So you can connect tons of devices throughout your home with no lag and no downtime. Plus, with 24-7 support and remote troubleshooting, you can rest assured that STAR is always there to help you should any issues arise. STAR's whole home Wi-Fi also comes with the Command IQ mobile app, putting you in control of your home network and making it easy to set up and connect devices, run network speed tests, pause Wi-Fi, and set parental controls all from the palm of your hand. It's the ultimate Wi-Fi experience. Contact STAR today to get started. Just because something may work doesn't mean it's right for your business. Let Star Communications knowledgeable consultants help you customize a hosted voice system that's right for you. Our dedicated experts work with you to understand your business needs and guide you at every step from choosing and installing services to ongoing maintenance and support. Contact Star today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We should know is on the air. I'm J.W. Simmons, your host. Each and every week we bring you a new subject or a familiar subject or something that you know something about or maybe nothing about. Uh, this week we're talking about everything from health uh, to physical activity. Uh, we're talking about the YMCA and Jared Barry, the executive director. Jared, thank you for sitting down and having a conversation with us again. One of the things that you mentioned in the conversation just a while ago before we went to break was uh, this idea of community. Mm -hmm. uh, help us understand when you look at from your position, you as as the director of the Y, and you think of community. It's it's a pretty broad question, but it involves a lot of moving parts. Well, you know, one thing, uh, you know, I, I try to get get the word out on it and hope people understand is that, you know, the YMCA is a community. Um, you know, we are the community. The community is the YMCA. We are your YMCA. Um, that's what we're here for. We're here to support the community and, and be a member and, um, you know, be in that fight along with everyone else to try to improve our community and, and make a positive impact uh, on those around us. But, you know, we, we have a, a, a community there at the facility. You know, we have people coming in and, and really, you know, having opportunities um, to either increase their health and wellness um, or to, I mean, get there and be social. That's always been a, a, a you know, major important aspect of the facility. And this is from, from years ago, long before um, it became a YMCA, is, is that facility was there to be a beacon in the community for people to come and interact and socialize, uh, but do so in a positive environment. And, um, you know, as, you know, 
as we came in as a YMCA, you know, we have we have quite a bit more that we can offer besides just the facility. Um, so, you know, be in the community and, um, you know, being part of the community. We we are really looking to expand our programming and expand our partnerships within the community. Um, we, we've already got a partnership with several organizations in the area and we've partnered with uh, the Clinton City School System. Uh, and we're hoping to um, continue to grow that partnership and, you know, really start putting some programming out that can have a positive impact um, on the kids in our community. And, you know, we're, we, we always need more. Um, we always need more activities, more positive environment um, access um, for the kids in our community. And uh, we're hoping to continue to grow that and, and not only here in Clinton, but also grow it, you know, across the county over the coming years. And um, we're hoping to develop our youth, you know, our youth development department. We're hoping to grow it and um, really expand and start, you know, offering some some great and positive activities for kids in the in the county. Yeah, and to just kind of clear up that relationship with community too, you've you've actually worked very closely with the with the local uh, uh, recreation departments, mm-hmm. both the city and county, and 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 that's a very homogeneous relationship. Absolutely. I mean, we, when we came when we, we came in and started talking about what we were trying to do, and we, we started meeting with everybody in the in the community between parks and recs or the school system. I mean, the level of support we've had has been wonderful, and um, you know, we're here to to support them as well. And we're here just to work together and because we all have the same goal. And, and that goal is to make a positive impact on our community and, and on the youth in our community. And so, um, you know, we're looking forward to, to growing those relationships and finding those areas where we can work together and um, continue making that impact. I want to kind of touch on the, the youth idea as well, is that we, you just mentioned several programs that uh, that young children can do, but you also get up into the teenage and adolescent uh, behavioral issues oftentimes comes to people's mind when we when we start talking about youth. Uh, it, is, is the why a, an outlet that, you know, when we started the conversation a while ago, we talked about um, the dr- drifting of youth. Well, mm-hmm. now we're dealing with issues and we're seeing them every day um, as a result of some people say it's COVID, it's post-COVID yeah. psychological issues and that kind of thing. How can the why help with that? And and what do you say to parents or others in the community that, that the why can do uh, and how, how can they help and engage in a positive way? So, um, you know, there are many many, many YMCAs across the country and, and they're in virtually every major city um, in every region. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of them that are doing some wonderful work um, that have that that programming that goes up until the teenage years. We have teenage, you know, teenage focused programming, um, you know, at our other branches in Wilmington. And we will be bringing that to Sampson County in the future. And, um, you know, we're going to be starting with the summer youth summer camps. We're hoping to, in the future, bring in um, you know some some summer camp opportunities or some summer classes that are youth focused or, or that are you know focused more on those teenage years and the adolescent years. And uh, we'll be doing the same thing throughout the um, the school year in our after school care. But um, you know the the there's a lot of opportunity out there for us to to bring that sort of thing here to Sampson County because we obviously all know it's needed. And um, you know, a, a lot of these programs, um, you know, and the opportunities to put these programs in place, um, you know, the the higher level of community support we have, um, you know, whether that's just support in general uh, and helping to get the message out, or that's financial support, um, you know, that that goes a long way towards helping us implement these programs and get them started and keeping them successful, um, because, you know, we. We have a lot of a uh, lot of kids in the, the city and in the county that you know they may not be able to f- afford typical after school care or a typical program. So, you know, as a YMCA, it's it's foundational and important to us to be able to provide access to kids who may not have that access, and we do that through financial assistance. Uh, we have a financial assistance program now. Um, it covers everything from, you know, membership costs to programming costs and really any type of paid programming that we offer. Um, you know, those who apply and qualify for financial assistance can get up to 50 or even 75 percent off the programming. So, you know, and our ability to do that comes directly from um, the support in the community. Uh, we have an annual campaign each year. We're about to kick off ours now, um, you know, and, and so we'll start getting the word out and letting the community know um, just how much their support could mean to us and how, how much it could mean to support this programming in the community and um, the impact it could potentially have. 
So when, when we think about, again, back to community and what you're doing too, is that uh, there's a large uh, faith-based community here in this whole area. And I'm, I'm sure you know that because you can't ride far without seeing a steeple somewhere. And that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you would encourage the support of, of churches and those kinds of things. If they want to call you and say, we'd like Absolutely. to uh, support a program, a particular program, or we'd like to, uh, to get you to take a look at something that we've done here. Would you like to for us to move it into your platform is is all of those things open for conversation absolutely and, you know as, as a ymca we are um an organization founded on on christian principles and um you know with with our branch and our association we, we keep that paramount and and so we'd love to work um with, with our, our fellow faith partners uh we you know we I believe there's a lot of opportunity for us all to work together and, you know, we could do so in many different ways. And so, yes, I would absolutely encourage uh, those conversations. And, you know, we talk about partnerships with the city parks, city and county parks and rec, the school system. Um, but I think, you know, that, that partnership with faith based organizations um, could, would be just as important. When you look at the, the past year uh, or even the past going on two years now, mm -hmm that you've been kind of at the helm of this huge ship that, that you're now driving. What's been one of your biggest challenges? You know, it's, sometimes it's just keeping the ship moving straight, you know, right. keep it moving forward. Um, you know, with so much that's gone on over the last year and, you know, we all, I think every organization in, in the area, probably in the country, um, has faced some staffing challenges, you know, finding the right yeah. people for the right role. Um, that's been one of our big challenges. Um, you know, the support has been there, the community involvement and support has been there. And so that has not been that big of a challenge, but, you know, getting the message out and helping everybody understand just what the YMCA is, what we're capable of, what we can bring to the community. Um, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily been a challenge, but that's been one of my big focuses. And that's what, you know, that's why I tend to, to come back to time after time is how can we help spread this message? Um, how can we let everybody know that we're not just a gym, that we are, you know, a community organization and we're here to support the community and bring about a positive, positive impact on the community. When I think about um, volunteering and and folks maybe retiring or they got some time on their hands and say, well, I'd, I'd like to have something to do for 10 hours a week or mm -hmm. just something to kind of occupy my time or something I'd like to contribute or, or an idea. Is, is that something you'd like to hear from that? Uh, because we have a lot of very talented people <laughs> in this area and, and they'll listen to this show mm -hmm. uh, that have unbelievable skills. But I don't know. Is that something you could uh, that you would hear and discuss and see how they might fit with what you're trying to accomplish? Absolutely. And we've already had a lot of great feedback and a lot of great conversations from from members and non-members alike, you know, getting out into the community. Um, you know, there there we do have some some wonderful people who um, are just as committed to the community as as those of us here on the front line are mm -hmm. um, and you know we'd love there, there's there's always going to be volunteer opportunities we'll have community events or activities where we'll need some support from the community we'll need some people to come in and and um, you know just help us help, help us steer, steer the ship on that day mm -hmm. and um, so yeah absolutely we would encourage that um, anybody who's interested you know please reach out to me directly reach out to my staff and let us know we'd love to talk to you like, uh, for example, yoga, Pilates, those kinds of things, those kinds of classes, uh, it's very kind of unique things. Do you have multiple instructors in that? Uh, do you have a demand to offer more classes? Uh, I know a lot of doctors now are suggesting people take yoga just as mm -hmm. kind of a relaxation focus kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we do have multiple yoga instructors. Um, you know, we may for a month or two at a time, it may only be one or two instructors teaching the classes, just depending on their availability and depending on what the demand is for um, the day and time of the week that we have those classes. But, you know, we did expand um, our our yoga class offerings at one point this last year because we were receiving a lot of community, um, you know, a, a lot of community uh, requests to increase those classes and increase those offerings. But, you know, right now, I believe, uh, you know, we have probably 
10 different instructors teaching classes throughout the week. And um, some of those are, um, you know, some of our part-time staff that may work as wellness coaches or personal trainers. Um, they're really the subject matter experts, but all of our, I mean, all of our group fitness instructors are great at what they do. And most of them have been doing it for quite a long time. And um, they keep up on the current information and, and they keep the classes new and fresh. And um, so that's the thing, you know, we, sometimes these classes, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, it gets kind of stale and, yeah. you know, it, it, it tends to lose some of the fun and then it starts feeling like a workout. But, um, you know, we, are, we encourage our instructors to really, you know, kind of keep it fresh, keep things, uh, you know, keep things new and, and um, we'll, you know, look we're going to take a break and we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We'll be back in just a moment. We're going to continue this discussion with Jared Barrier about the YMCA, your YMCA right here in Clinton. You might have something to contribute. You might want to be an instructor. You might want to be part of it. You might just have a, a suggestion. We'll be back in a moment. Eastern North Carolina is a beautiful place where we gladly choose to call home. And we strive to provide the best communication services. STAR is committed to improving communications to all our service areas because we want to improve the communities where we not only work, but also live. STAR Communications, we are neighbors serving neighbors. If you run a business, you need sales. To get sales, you need customers. To get customers, you need exposure. Let our team of experts craft and produce the perfect video ad to reach your intended audience while making the most of your advertising dollars. Call 1-800-706-6538 or visit starcom.net to contact our Star Communications production team and get your business moving to the next level. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're coming up on the last segment of We Should Know. My name is J.W. Simmons. I'm your host. And as we were talking, as we went off air a while ago, time goes fast here. Uh, this is our last segment. I want to remind you, you can reach us via email at we should know edu at gmail.com. That's we should know edu at gmail.com. Dot com. If you want to drop us a card or, or a message at the post office, it's post office box 1482, Clinton, North Carolina. And that is We Should Know, or you could just send it WSK to post office box 1482, Clinton, North Carolina. You can reach us at either one of those locations. We're talking with Jared Barrier. Jared, again, thank you for being with us. It seems like time goes fast. We had an opportunity earlier off camera to have a uh, discussion and uh, we were talking. Uh, we could probably have done a show what we talked about off Absolutely. air and we're trying to get all this in now. But I want to circle back and um, and give you an opportunity to kind of tell us as a community mm -hmm. that you serve uh, how we can better help the YMCA and support the YMCA here. And, and it's yes, it is about money, but sometimes it's just not about money. So right. I want to kind of start the conversation for this segment with that. OK, yeah, thank you. So, I mean, besides the financial impact that um, the community can have, I mean, you know, just becoming a member, um, joining the facility is huge. I mean, um, you know, those those dollars go um, right back into the organization, right back into programming and, um, you know, help us help us continue to grow. And, um, you know, besides being a member, just just talking about the YMCA is great. Sharing our Facebook posts, um, you know, letting everybody know of, of new programming. I mean, and opportunities like this to, to talk in a formal setting about it and get the message out there is always wonderful. Uh, but, you know, we, we always relish any opportunity we have to um, get that information out to the community and then rely on the community to, to help spread the message for us. And, um, you know, we have a we have something for everybody at the YMCA. And um, even if, you know, individual may not be interested, I, I guarantee somebody they know would be interested in, in at least one of the programs or, or opportunities we have um, there at the facility or, um, you know, as we increase our programming around the community, uh, there, there's going to be something for everybody. It, it interests me in, in that as we're talking about this is it seems to me that this is an organization that allows you to build positive, supportive relationships. Absolutely. And and it sounds that I mean, I've, I've known you for some times now, and and that's kind of what you do. You, you, you kind of support people. You get them moving forward. You help them with wherever, whether they're in their 80s, 90s or whether they're in their five, six, seven, mm -hmm. eight years. I mean, and that's a huge, overwhelming task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it. it you know, it, it's what we're here for. 
you know, and I mean, a lot of times it, it, it becomes who we are and that's who we are as a YMCA. And, and I can speak for my, my staff as well as, you know, it's, it's not work to us. Like this is who we are and this is what we love doing. We love sharing the message and we love, you know, supporting all these other great organizations and um, members of the community who, who have the passion that we have um, towards improving the community and making that impact and, um, you know, interacting and, and engaging with those retirement age members who may not have been anybody to interact with um, on a daily basis coming in the facility or, you know, seeing the, the joy and, um, you know, just the recognition of a new experience in a child's eyes, you know, when they're participating in whether in a pool activity or at the itty bitty soccer, um, you know, anything like that. It's, it's just it's very it's rewarding. It's challenging. But there's a lot of reward in it, too, when you, when you can see that positive impact um, face to face. Circling back also that addresses this uh, way that people can help. Uh, we discussed the idea if somebody maybe says, well, I don't particularly want to be involved, but there there is a way that they could actually sponsor a youth or somebody, a, a, a child to be part of the Y through donations. And and that in turn allows that particular person that may not be able to financially afford it. Mm -hmm. To, to go to the Y and change their life. Absolutely. I mean, there are so many people, I, I believe, already over the last year that without the community support and without that financial assistance, what those funds that we have in place and that we've received, it, there are so many people that I think could not have experienced, um, you know, the programming and the opportunities that they've had at the YMCA over the last year. And, you know, all donations that, that we that we collect can be earmarked for a specific purpose or a specific department. So if somebody wanted to donate specifically for youth programming or even a specific type of youth programming, um, you know, we respect those wishes and that's where the, the money goes. And um, I think I mentioned earlier we're getting ready to kick off our annual fundraising campaign and um, you know there'll be more information forthcoming about that we'll have a couple couple community activities and um, opportunities where, where we really try to get that big push in donations but um, you know we're going to have some some great information coming out kind of being specific and saying you know even if it's a small amount, that small amount has an impact. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ten, fifteen dollars has an impact. It's gonna, it's gonna provide an extra swim lesson, or it's gonna provide an extra day in, in summer camp. Um, so every dollar counts, and um, you know, we, we we love our community and just the support they've given us so far. Well, it's, you know, and of course, we don't know everybody that, that listens or watches this show, but, uh, you know, I'm sure there's some uh, board members with the education out there, both city and county schools. There's others that is involved in education. The, the process of education comes to mind when I think about the YMCA. This, this is a way of, of taking a, a young mind that may be exposed to some very negative things and bringing them in to a facility and creating a relationship that gives them something to be proud of. Is that is that statement too um, far reaching or is that something real? No, I mean, that, that's 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 our goal. That's what we're going. That's what we try to do with all this programming. Yeah, I got my start with the YMCA as a, an after school and as a summer camp counselor. And so from firsthand experience, like learning the YMCA at that time and interacting with these kids and, you know, just seeing um, the, the seeing a difference in a child from the beginning of summer till the end of summer, um, you know, you can see that, that the impact it's having is a life altering um, impact. And, you know, being able to to run that programming year round is is vitally important and um, providing that environment for these kids that, you know, in the in just hours after school and in hours in the summer, you know, we can provide them a safe supportive environment where they're going to have some great structure or it's going to still be educational. Um, but, you know, where they're going to have the opportunity to interact with people in a positive manner and, um, you know, just experience some mentorship that they may not have access to otherwise. A lot of times there's these things that, that you know of that um, obviously we could have no way of knowing. Is there a critical piece right now that you need financial support for that maybe you're looking at in the coming year or in the next few months that, that you really need some financial support for that you could mention to, to folks? If, and hopefully they would want to say, yeah, I'd, you know, I'd like to, my donation to go to that. So. You know, every like all our donations that come in, um, like I mentioned earlier, can be earmarked for a specific cause or a specific purpose. But um, our biggest need right now is, um, you know, donations coming in 
to help supplement um, our financial assistance um, funds. Mm -hmm. You know, I would love to, you know, double the amount of financial assistance that we're able to offer and um, that we put out into the community over the next year. I'd love to double, triple that number. Um, so that is, you know, if I was to identify one single area, that's where it would be. It'd be money coming in that we could put back into the community throughout the, through these, uh, you know, discounts in programming, uh, discounts in membership, and just really providing that next level of access to kids and families who may not have it otherwise. So if somebody wanted to, to, to write a check, make a donation, they could do that and specify, I'd like for this to go to youth age so and so to so and so, that kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yeah. So they can they can write a check. We you know we have a form that can be filled out and, requ and requested through the website. And in that form, it lists everything, and you can um, choose exactly where you'd like your funds to go. And that's pretty amazing because when I'm just sitting here thinking about it, and I'm sure other people watching or listening to the show may be thinking too, uh, we don't get to do that when we write a check to the right. government, do we? No. <laughs> With taxes, you don't you don't get to say what Wish that we goes. Could. <laughs> yeah, that, that might change the playing field right, quite yeah. a bit. I, I've got a, a mission statement uh, that I picked up uh, about the why, and it just simply says uh, to put. Christian principles into practice through programs that build healthy spirit, mind, and body for all. Absolutely. Is, is that, does that one sentence kind of encapsulate it? Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, that that's what we live. That's our cause. And that's, that's reinforced with all the staff. And, um, you know, I know we, we think about it every day and, you know, all, everything that, that we're doing in the facility, all the programming we're putting out, um, that's the foundation of it. And um, we're here to reach everybody and make whatever positive impact we can. And, um, you know, in, in, in doing so, not forget, not forgetting our founding principles, um, you know, not, you know, not forgetting who we are and why we're here and why we're doing uh, what we do. You know, Jared, it just, it, and of course, we're coming up kind of the last of the show here, but it, it just strikes me. This is this community is a huge community of faith-based people. And, of course, we don't mind using that word on here. We don't mind speaking that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just strikes me as this is an opportunity for all of these faith-based folks that maybe sit on a board meeting sometimes and go, well, what are we, you know, what are we going to donate to this year and what do we need to mm -hmm. donate to? This is a perfect way of yes. saying we can change and improve our community through the YMCA. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, there are many YMCAs that partner with churches we have um, throughout our association in our locations in Wilmington. And, you know, I'd love to, to you know, increase those partnerships here in Sampson County. And, um, you know, there's a lot that we can do together. You know, we can do a lot on our own, but the more we come together and, and partner and, and pull the same direction, the more we can get done. Well, again, I want to uh, try to make it very important for folks to understand, but I want you to give them a telephone number. Oftentimes on the radio side, people will say, we just want a telephone number. Can you give them a telephone number to call? 910-703-4004. And that's my personal number. Give me wow. a call. Say it again. 910-703-4004. Okay, we're going to put that on the screen on on the TV side so folks can see that. Plus, we'll put your website up, yeah. and uh, hopefully that'll make a difference. Uh, again, thank you for so, being with us, and absolutely. I'll give you uh, about 10 seconds for last comment. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, it, it's great to get here and, and really kind of put the last year in perspective and, um, you know, be reminded of the support we've received so far and, and you know, continue to, to ask for that support in, in the coming years. Thank you for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with us. We look forward to seeing you again right here each and every week. And if you have questions or comments, reach out to Jared Barry or his staff about the YMCA and what it's doing in the community. And uh, he's always been very open and forthcoming. If you need somebody to speak to you about what happens at YMCA, call him. We look forward to seeing you again next week right here. And may God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.